Rejoice now, all heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. If you have joined us in your cars this morning, please know that when we say Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia, you are invited to announce that good news through nonverbal means using your car horns. Yes, it is early, but there aren't too many of us. So, while, so we will join our voices, perhaps roll down your windows, join in the acclamation, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Now exalt all creation around God's throne, celebrate the divine mysteries with exultation, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Re rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The tomb is empty. Christ has conquered. The risen Savior shines upon you. Christ, Christ. is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. We have now our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. And it's my pleasure to welcome Robin Rio as our guest musician this morning. Uh, if, when she starts... We're going to make sure you can hear her in your cars, um, so she'll do a little test and then lead the hymn. Good morning. It's so nice to be here. Jesus Christ is risen today, and a happy Easter. If you're able to hear me in your car, go ahead and give a little toot. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. from the 25th chapter of Isaiah, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will over all peoples, the sheet that will spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalmist 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let, Let Israel, Israel now declare, God's, God's mercy endures forever. 
The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate, this is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it unto you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was, it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. read the gospel we believe we are encountering God's living word the very presence of Jesus Christ so when I say glory to you O Lord and praise to you O Christ you are invited once again to use nonverbal means to honk your horn to give thanks to God and announce to others God's good news here today this is the Holy Gospel according to st. Mark glory to you O Lord James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus's body and very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen they went to the tomb as they entered the tomb they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, 
and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning once again, and let us greet one another with these fantastic Easter morning words. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark's is an Easter story that is defined by the varies. In his telling, things don't just happen. They happen to a higher degree. People don't just feel things, they feel emotions to an extent. As they are, they are whatever they are with an exceeding quality. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, who, when the Sabbath was over, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' dead body. And very early on the first day of the week, Mark reports, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. It's not just morning. It's not just early, as in, my coffee is kicking in early. It's of the automatic percolator I set last night is already done brewing early. And as the women are going to the tomb very early, they are talking, saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? Because, as Mark will tell it in the very next verse, the stone was very large. This is a very big concern. The women know they cannot handle it alone because this stone is very big too big for them to maneuver on their own. So it's very early, and these women face a very big obstacle. Imagine their surprise then when they get to the tomb and the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. They enter the tomb, and seeing a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, they become alarmed not just scared, but alarmed, or extra scared, very frightened. The young man in a white robe tries to looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. We might say that the angel has to state for the women what is actually very obvious because Jesus is clearly not there. But this news is also so very unbelievable or so very different from what the women expected to find that the angel has to state the very obvious reality again. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him just as he told you. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome, they do go. They fled, as Mark reports, which means they left very fast, ran very quickly from the empty tomb. They go very fast because terror and amazement had seized them. Terror, meaning they are very scared very surprised. Then they remain very silent, saying nothing to anyone, for they were afraid or very frightened again. Yes, Marx is an Easter story defined by the varies, the very early morning, the very large stone, the very quick retreat, the very scared, very surprised emotional response, 
a very silent, very unfinished ending. Perhaps we should expect as much from the women and the Gospel of St. Mark on that first Easter morning. After all, in their minds, Jesus was very dead. The very powerful empire and ruling religious apparatus had killed him very publicly on the cross through the very humiliating means of crucifixion. And this tracked very much with what the world they with the world that they knew and lived in, a world where the powerful retain their power, where the hungry and poor stay hungry and poor, the marginalized stay on the margins, a world where one's sins stuck to them, where the dead stay dead. This was the very entrenched status quo of their lives, the very clear realities of their present day, things that would have been very clear to them, to them then, like they are still very obvious to us today. Friends, the varies of St. Mark's Easter story are perfect for 2021 because this past year has been a year of varies. Living amidst a pandemic has made everything in our lives a little extra. Everything has been given a very. If you are married, then over the past year, you've been very married. And if you're single, then over the past year, you've been very single. If you are a parent, then you've been very much a parent. If your day job was hard, then it likely got very harder. And retired folks might feel like they're very retired. If your life was already difficult somehow, it's likely become very difficult. Those who lived on the margins of society now live very close to the edges. The isolated have become very isolated. The powerful and profitable, very powerful and profitable. The hungry are now very hungry. The sick, awfully very sick. And there has been so very much death. That is why we are all in need of the very true news of Easter. The very truth that God is never deterred by the varies. In fact, as the Easter story shows, God is the God of even greater, even more excessive, even more extreme varies. That first Easter, it was a very early morning, but God was already at work. And it was a very heavy stone that sealed the tomb, but to God, it weighed nothing. The women made a very quick retreat, but they still found Jesus ahead of them, because having defeated death, no distance could separate people from God. Even when Jesus was very dead in a very cold, very sealed tomb, God brought the very breath of life into Jesus' body. And the one who was dead and, and was That's the very true, very Easter news. In the faith, face of death, God is very creative. What seems very dead and gone is for God the start of very new life. And Christ, who was very dead in the tomb for three days, is very risen, very much going ahead of us. So no matter how very scared or very afraid or very confused you are, God is already very near with very joyful news. And whatever keeps you silent or secretly away in our hearts, 
God is very forgiving of them. Whatever early mornings or any mornings will bring us, and that whichever very large stones see immovable in our lives and in our life together, well, our God is very powerful. Stronger by orders of magnitude, merciful to an unimaginable extreme, exceedingly gracious with a grace that is never in vain, and very much effective and transformative and resurrecting in our lives and world today. And all this makes us very hopeful. Very hopeful that whatever is very in our life, Christ's resurrection is very real, very true, very much for us. Very day of resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
Grace the Lord in your mercy, the congregation may respond to our prayer. Praise to you for your joy revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of love that is stronger than death. Fill this assembly with joy. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Risen Lord, in your, in a, your mercy, Here praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Risen Lord, in your mercy, Here are prayers. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Hear a prayer for the residents in refugee camps, for teenage migrants, for the people who live on our streets. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Especially we pray for those on our prayer list. Rachel, Rachel the family of Wes, Susan, Anne, Hope, Lynn, Steve, Barbara, Gabriella, Dave, Sabra, Whitten, Terry, Maria, Mark, Victor, Ken, Wanda, Charles, Rachel, and Cindy. And those we name to you silently or aloud. For Diane. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the power of the resurrection. Fill our world with power over the pandemic. Lessen the spread. Increase the distribution of vaccines. Hear a prayer for everyone who is still contracting the coronavirus. For healthcare workers and for all who have lost family, friends, and livelihood. Restore health throughout the world. Grace and Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that at the end of all things you raise us with all the saints to rejoice in your presence forever. Risen Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now share the peace of our Lord. If you haven't joined us in drive-in worship before, we do that, as you might know, if you've watched online, through a honk of the horn. But you can also roll down your window, give a wave, give a nod, a peace sign to the person next to you. I also invite you, if you're joining us online or even here at drive-in, um, to... Peace, so that they know that you're thinking them and you are extending Christ's peace to them. So now the peace of the Lord be with you always and, and also, also with, with you. A few announcements this morning. Uh, if you are new to our worship, either here at the drive-in or online, please know that we want to connect with you and uh, welcome you here at Lutheran Church of Our Savior. Online, uh, under the comments of our live stream, you can find a link that says connect with us. That goes to a form where you can leave contact information, which comes to me and gives me a chance to reach out to you, to welcome you, uh, to get you to let to see if you have any questions 
about who we are and how we worship here at Lutheran Church of Our Savior. Afterwards as well, um, we do gather in the parking lot um, wearing masks and standing at distance to greet one another. So I look forward to um, welcoming any newcomers then. Um, I thank you today it goes out to those who have provided real bread for our communion this morning. Um, that was Landon Strunk and Noah Strunk, uh, two children in our congregation who headed that up with their grandparents, Scott and Babs Benson. So we're thankful to um, multiple generations of the Benson and Strunk families for providing us the bread that we'll use at communion. Um, as well, we, enjoy, we uh, enjoyed a coffee, a brief coffee hour before worship outdoors last Sunday, some of you might know. And we will be doing that on Sundays uh, going forward starting next Sunday. We will gather wearing masks at distance um, in the parking lot. You're invited to bring your own mug um, or bring your own coffee in that mug. We will have some prepared uh, for you to drink. And um, it's a way to restore that fellowship and, and safely gather um, and restore that feeling, that communal feeling that we know and love here at Lutheran Church of Our Savior. We have a special prayer this morning. Um, you might have heard me mention Diane during the prayers. Diane Beal, who is a member of our congregation and has just been a faithful volunteer um, for our communion service, is having her appendix removed this morning. Um, this came up on Friday night, um, scheduled for yesterday, but was held off to this morning. So I am in contact with her husband, Maurice, who is able to visit her in the hospital. Uh, but we do pray for her as she undergoes um, an unscheduled appendectomy today. Our prayers are with you, Diane. We will now receive our offering. If you've joined us in your car today, the ushers will be around with large baskets to receive your gifts. So if you've brought one, you may roll down your window and await an usher now. Many of you give generously online and we are thankful for those gifts. Um, those joining online can give at lcosva.org slash giving, or you can mail a check to the church. We give because in Christ's resurrection, we belong to God, which means that everything that belongs to us, every gift we possess, every skill we've honed, also belongs to God. So what a joy that we can offer them freely so that God can use our gifts and skills for the redemption and resurrection of Christ and in our world. As well as we enter sharing the Holy Communion meal, you may now prepare your elements for Holy Communion. You may take your bread out of its wrapper and put it on your plate, and you may also uncover your wine at this time. Um, we wait to eat all together until after the Lord's Prayer at Communion. So I'll be inviting you to eat, or you can always watch me or watch your neighbor so that we can all share in Christ's body and blood together after the Lord's prayer. Our offertory anthem this morning is Rejoice, the Lord is King. Rejoice, the Lord is King. 